On the surface it all looks pretty peaceful. Birds and the small mammals come to Joan Root's garden in abundance. They are fed and watered in what has become an oasis. Another thing that has changed over the years is the rainfall, so critical to the lake and its surroundings. Global warming, caused by carbon dioxide emissions from traffic, industry and planes, may well be the cause, but whatever the reason, the effect on the flower growing may be significant. The next introduction in this comedy of errors took place in 1970. The Louisiana Red Swamp Crayfish from the USA. They set upon the remaining water lilies and increased mightily. By 1975, they were being exploited to the extent of 15 tons in that year. They're a tough customer, and as is often the case with an aggressive alien, they took over the place. fight continues onto a crayfish trap, a form of mini lobster pot. With or without bait, in years of abundance, crayfish investigate anything and they're easily caught. All around are breeding females, fanning their eggs to bring oxygen to what will be more thousands and thousands of babies. Crayfish continued to hammer the underwater vegetation reported to be abundant in 1979, nine years after their introduction, but completely destroyed it within four years by 1983, the last year in which crayfish harvests exceeded 100 metric tons. This crayfishery attracted fishermen from further afield, and so the human population pressure on the lake also increased. But these people needed work and so it was that an ecological mistake became an employment opportunity. Of all the changes to the lake, man was increasingly important. For years he'd lived here in balance with the natural system, but with each introduction came a new impact, and it seemed the whole ecosystem was in danger. There was no coordination, no sustainable plan. The crayfish business was an example, boom or bust, use and destroy. So the survival of the lake 
continued to be threatened. The fortunes of the fishery and the birds that depend on fish, like pelicans, rose and fell with the lake levels. The papyrus was cut, nursery grounds for fish were trampled by people. Increasingly, as fishermen invaded more and more of the shoreline, illegal fishing grew, management didn't work. This other harvest from the lake is a native fish called tilapia and very good to eat. But as more and more fishermen move in, the demand on the fishing also grows. Is the future of the valuable tilapia fading? In addition to the tilapia, the American black bass has been introduced several times, first in 1926. They're also called large-mouthed bass for obvious reasons, and they fed on the crayfish that were destroying the famous Lake Naivasha water lilies. But did that solve anything? Not really. What might have been fine in theory didn't work in practice. The genies were out of the bottle and in the lake. Naivasha's original system was changed forever and the blue water lilies of 30 years ago now survived as scattered individuals in a very different community. But nature can be very resilient, very adaptable. Where enough papyrus is left, fish will breed. They're potentially prolific. But are there enough to go round? That question's further complicated by yet another introduction, a really serious one. It's called water hyacinth, and like the salvinia that was introduced in 1962, it's taken over the lake from as recently as 1988. It forms large, dense rafts, useful for cormorants to rest on, but a disaster for the lake's ecology. It's been spread from the Amazon all over the tropical world, and it's now a major pest, costing millions of pounds to control and disrupting rivers and lakes drastically. That other formidable alien, the Louisiana crayfish, lives deep in the Salvinia and Hyacinth mats, where fishermen and ibis pursue them amongst others. What was an open, shallow shoreline full of variety has become a carpet of green, one species in charge, the deceptively attractive water hyacinth. Home to the crayfish, yes, but not much else. They come out to sunbathe, pretty safe close to that dense mat of stems and roots and intriguing floating bladders. but not safe enough when the whole lot is turned over. Good. Oh, yeah. This is a seriously successful plant. It dominates all that tries to live below. No water lily can get through. So what's happened to the lily trotters that used to trot so nimbly across the lily pads that used to be here? <laughs> <laughs> 